Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from Egat Tech. Since it's a new year guys, I'm going to be doing a big kind of unboxing for you. So this is actually a product from Asus. You can see it's the ROG logo, the Republic of Gamers. But this is not an ROG2 phone. I already did that review and it doesn't come in a box this big. So this is not a mobile phone in any way. Uh, this is an Asus laptop. To be precise, the Rogue Strix SCAR 2. So in keeping with the theme of the channel where I'm doing mostly gaming, I'm going to be focusing as well on a couple of laptops that I have. Right now, the laptop I'm using is the Acer Helios 300. So that's the Acer Predator in other words. And and I'm going to be testing out this. So this is the RTX 2070. I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing for you so you can see what's inside. And right after that, my usual review. And that will be coming in uh, another video later on, guys. So let's get started with this unboxing, guys. All right, so it's a big and heavy box. Uh, let's see what's inside. Not sure if you can see it clearly on the camera. Uh. Okay. So this might be the laptop. And let's see what else is in here. Okay, so I guess it comes with a free backpack. Let's remove that first. Let me open up the plastic, guys. Hang on. All right, so it's an ROG2 backpack with the ROG2 branding and you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly guys, this is Republic of Gamers. It reminds me of that case that Asus came out for the ROG2 phone. So it has uh, the same Republic of Gamers design here on the bag. Pretty excited to use it, so let's set this aside for now and see what else is in this big box. Okay, uh, still pretty heavy. Okay, let's remove this box okay so this is the laptop guys so let's see what's at the back so you can see the specifications over here this is the intel i7 8750h and it has a one terabyte hard drive with a 256 gig ssd uh no optical drive on this one guys and by default it comes with 16 gig of ram and it has doesn't state what type of graphics card it has but uh let's open it up and see what's in here let's see how we can open it oh, okay so it opens up like so i've always been a fan of the way that asus boxes their products it speaks volumes of the care that or the design that they're making I guess this is the laptop. It comes in a fiber sleeve. Let's put this aside for now. Then let's see what else is in the box. Okay, so we've got here a public of gamers. And let's see what's inside. In the box, uh, let's see what's in here. Okay, so you've got user manual. We all read that, right? And you've got I'm not sure what this is. It says it's Metal Earth. It is um, mechanical sculpture. So I guess it's something you build. And let's see what else is in here. Uh, another manual. And something big. Oh, I guess this is for the 3D metal model kit. Hmm, it's pretty interesting. So the first time I've seen any of the gaming uh, laptops come with this. I'll see if I can build it and I'll let you guys know uh, what it looks like. Let's set that aside for now. Let's see what else is in the box. Let's open up the central compartment. Alright, so I guess this is the charging brick. It has the ROG logo. And I know that this is a 230 watt power adapter. Uh, it says so right there, 230. Let's set that aside as well, put it down. Okay, which side will we pick next? Let's pick the right one. Right side. Okay, so I guess there's another smaller box over here. Uh, what is this? It says not for sale. Hmm, kind of interesting what's in here. Oh, cool. So it's a gaming mouse. I guess it comes with every purchase of a Strix card too. So this is the Gladius 2 optical gaming mouse. Oh, pretty cool looking. I'm not, is it uh, wireless? Oh, it comes with wires. 
No, it's just a gold-plated cable. It looks like a micro USB, so you plug it in. Not sure if you can use it wirelessly, but I'll test it out for you guys. Put that aside as well. Let's close this compartment down. And let's see what is on the left side. And nothing else here except your power cable. Okay, so that goes in your uh, charging brick or your power adapter. All right, so I guess that's all that there is in the box. Let's close it up. Okay, excited to get to the laptop. All right, as I mentioned, it's in a protective sleeve. Um, let's pull it out. Nice. So it's in an aluminum finish. I've got the ROG2 logo over here. Let me flip it over. Okay, and it says Republic of Gamers right over there. Okay, I said it's, it's pretty heavy um, for first lift, but I know it's only 2.45 kilograms in weight. It seems to be smaller than the Acer Predator that I have. Let me see if I can get my, hang on guys. Let me do a quick size comparison. All right, so here is my Acer Predator. Let me just flip that around. So that is the logo for the Predator. And let me put it down at the back. Yeah, you can see that the size difference, it's a lot larger, um, but it is, it is the same 15 inch. That is also a 15 inch laptop. Probably this might have smaller bezels. So let's uh, open it up and have a look. Okay, hey, first look guys, it has the ROG logo on the center here and it seems that the webcam is here down on the lower right, not at the top where it usually is. So it attributes to how small or compact the laptop is. So it has a 144 hertz uh, refresh rate with a 3M millisecond or 3MS of response time. So pretty fast for a for a monitor has a full size keyboard arrow keys are at the lower right here first time i've seen it in this configuration where you've got the, uh, the number keys at, at the right always been a fan of that and you've got the touchpad over here at the bottom with the left and right uh buttons so let's turn on the laptop oh and you can see it has uh, rgb lighting at the bottom over here and rgb keyboard Looks like there's a four zone lighting over here. It's not just one. The Acer Predator that I have has it in red. Only has a red backlight for the keyboard. Okay, some quick specs on the laptop. This is the Asus GL504, or basically known as the Rogue Strix Scar Edition, Scar 2. And it has a 15.6 inch screen, full HD 1920 by 1080. It's only an IPS LCD display, but it has 144 Hertz refresh rate. Also has a matte finish, you know, just to minimize the reflections. So it might be usable in direct sunlight. I'm going to try that out and let you guys know. As for the other specs on this uh, machine for the CPU, it's running the Intel Coffee Lake Core i7-8750H. It's a six core uh, CPU. And um, the, for the GPU, of course, it has, since it's an i7, has the Intel HD 630 with a dedicated NVIDIA RTX 2070. So this is actually the full power 2070, not the Max-Q version. Really interested in, or really excited and testing them out in, in a couple of games that I'll be running. For the RTX 2070, it has eight gig of GDDR6 VRAM. So it's pretty future-proof when it comes to games since there's not a lot of games right now that make use of the full eight gig. But I could be wrong guys, so uh, shout out in the comments below if there are any games that actually require at least a minimum of eight gig of um, graphics memory. If not, then yeah, then I guess I'm right. And in this configuration that I have guys, this is, uh, it has 16 gig of RAM. And as I mentioned before, it has a 256 gig M.2 and VME SSD. And from what I've heard or what I've read uh, from the specifications, this is the Western Digital one, SN250. Not sure how it fares compared to the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. I've actually installed that on the Acer Predator. I'm going to be doing a couple of SSD benchmarks as, as well and see if I want to replace the existing Western Digital SSD that's uh, already installed on this laptop. For the secondary slot, it has a, a normal SATA hard drive. It's, it's sitting at one terabyte. I'm not sure from which manufacturer it came from, but I'll also let you guys know on that. All right, so what is a laptop without the ports? So let's see what is here on the left side. 
Right, let's talk about the ports again, guys. So here you've got, starting from the rightmost side, you've got the headphone jack. And next, you've got the USB seek port. Unfortunately, no Thunderbolt support on this one, guys. And then uh, two USB-A ports, an HDMI. Uh, you've got the mini display port. You got the LAN cable over here. And of course, the power, uh, power jack or the power port. Okay, at the back, there doesn't seem to be any ports at the back. It has the Rogue Strix uh, emblazoned here on the back. Let's move to the right side of the laptop. Okay, here you've got another USB-A. Okay, so it's a USB 3.1. So actually, all of them are USB 3.1, including these two. And you've got the micro SD card reader or card reader. And you've got a Kensington lock over here. So if you want to secure your laptop, you've got that option. I haven't set up the laptop yet, guys. So I'm not sure if I can show you any games right now. We can do a quick speaker test for you guys, the same way that I do for any of the new mobile phones that I'm testing. So let's do it here for the laptop. Let me just uh, plug in my password here, guys. Hang on. Keyboard's pretty nice to type in. Um, there's a lot of travel, not much noise. And if you notice here, the WASD keys are actually clear. So it makes it easier to see or to see the backlight. I'm gonna go around in the settings for the command center and see if I can customize the RGB lighting on the keyboard. Pretty sure I can, but I don't think it's per keys like in some of the newer laptops that have come out. I know there's just a four zone one. Uh, I'll let you guys know as well. I'm bu I'll be doing a full review. I'm gonna be using it for uh, quite a while. Installing a couple of games, doing some benchmarks, and primarily comparing it with the Acer Predator that I have. I'll let you guys know if it's a good value for money, whether it's worth updating to or upgrading to from an Acer Predator. Okay, so as I mentioned, since it has a 230 watt power adapter, the battery is a 66 watt hour one. A couple of sites I've read says the maximum time that you can get from normal use will be around four hours for four and a half hours but i'll do some testing of course i'm not going to be doing a lot of gaming with this on the battery it's going to be gimping performance since you know you're running on battery so it's the preferred way of actually using the laptop is like a desktop where you've got it plugged in to, to your outlet or you've got it plugged into your wall it kind of defeats the purpose of being a, a laptop where, where it means that you can bring it anywhere you go it's actually much easier to bring a laptop to land parties or if you're going to be competing in tournaments instead of bringing a full-size desktop those are pretty heavy so you've got to bring a desktop and a monitor separately at least this one is just just a matter of bringing the laptop on its own okay so i've connected the wi-fi Let's open up a browser real quick. By default, of course, you've got the Edge browser. So that's what's new that came in Windows 10. Let's go to YouTube. All right, so this is my usual NCS or no copyright sound test. And it's the Synco one. Let me play it for you guys real quick. To be honest guys, sound is pretty good, it has a bit of bass to it, of course not the best. It's not going to rival any external speakers or any standalone speakers that you might have, but it's going to do in a pinch. Not sure how well it's going to do if you're going to use it primarily for gaming or if you're in a LAN party. Best bet for that is you have to use your gaming headset or any headset for that matter. They say that this laptop has one of the better thermal solutions out in the market right now. So I'm excited and actually testing that. So I'm going to be running a lot of heavy games, benchmark, 3D mark to be exact, and a couple more, probably PC mark as well. And I'll let you guys know how the thermal goes. And I guess from that, we'll know if you actually need to repaste this. Quick story guys, for the Acer Predator, I actually had a lot of problems with the thermals on that one. It got pretty hot. It was actually hitting over 90 degrees Celsius in a couple of games that I've been playing. I did have Final Fantasy 15 on that and it usually hits 90 to 95 almost 100 degrees Celsius which I know is not safe uh, for prolonged periods so what I did was actually looked up what to do about it and what everyone suggested or the usual suggestion that I saw is that to repaste the CPU and GPU. So I actually went out and bought one of the better thermal paste out there. I don't really want to try liquid metal for now, so I stuck with thermal paste. The one that I found that was pretty good or recommended by a lot of overclockers was the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. Not Conductonaut, 
the cryonaut one. Of course, with the help of YouTube, I found a guide on how to actually disassemble or open up my Ezra Predator and actually repasted the CPU and GPU on my own. Good news is I actually got it back together and working and I have my temperature down by almost 20 degrees. So that, that that's a big, big difference, guys. What I heard was that the stock thermal paste that came with the Acer Predator was really uh, not any good. So replacing it with a, a quality one actually re reduced the temperature. At idle, I usually notice that the fans actually stop spinning because it was already cool enough to not really need the fan to be on. And at heavy gaming, I did a stress test on this one using IDA64 and the maximum that I'm getting is around 80, 80 degrees so it's a big big difference. I can use it now for prolonged periods of gaming. So let's see how this Asus laptop fares in that aspect. The RGB lighting at the bottom is uh, really catching my attention. Pretty well lighted here in my area. Probably gonna look better if I have a dim light or if you're playing in the dark. Of course, it's not really advisable to play in the dark. It's not good for the eyes. Don't play in the dark, guys. Play in a well-lighted area and it's going to offset the RGB lighting because from what I see, there is a glow to it, but it's not so bright that you can really see it. It's not really standing out. Not like the Acer Predator Helios, that's uh, all red. So even with the full lights on or in a really bright room, you can still see the red RGB lighting. So let's end this quick video here, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm really excited in using this, so that's why I'm ending the video real quick. And I'll let you guys know I'll be back in a week with my verdict. If this is good enough to upgrade from a 2018 laptop, I know it's 2020 now, but this came out in 2019. So stay tuned for that video, guys. Until then, like and subscribe, hit that bell icon like notification, and see you all in my next one.